that the requirement for convection actually changes the whole explanation, the whole dynamics of, the, of uh, how we understand the energy processes. But there is a great, an enhanced greenhouse effect. Additional carbon dioxide in the atmosphere affects in two ways. Firstly, it does reduce long-wave radiation to space. But how does that affect the climate? Because the long-wave radiation emanates from the atmosphere, and the atmosphere is cooling. So is that going to enhance the greenhouse effect at the surface? It's a very long way of, of, uh, of getting around to, to explain it. They, the explanation is, well, the Earth has got to warm up again, and it warms up in various ways, and so we have this uh, direct relationship between the, sorry, the direct relationship between the reduction in long-wave radiation to space and the surface temperature, and you see in the IPCC reports they talk about the, the sensitivity parameter, the relationship between the reduction in long-wave radiation to space and the surface temperature rise. However, increased carbon dioxide also increases the back radiation at the surface, down here. The 324 watts per square metre is increased slightly, and it has a direct impact on the surface energy budget. By increasing the back radiation, you must raise the temperature a little bit, and by raising the temperature, you increase the surface emission, and you also increase the evapotranspiration. So this is really the, the area that we really need to, to focus on, because this is where carbon dioxide in the atmosphere really impacts upon the climate, and we can get a very good handle on that. But first of all, let's look at how really important is carbon dioxide in the radiation processes. And as the title here says, carbon dioxide has a diminishing impact, because if you have no carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, and you introduce 50 parts per million, immediately you reduce the radiation to space by nearly 20 watts per square metre. Uh, carbon dioxide is an important and active greenhouse gas. But once you put 50 parts per million in, and you double that to 100 parts per million, you only increase the impact by about 3 watts per square metre. A very little impact. You double again, not adding another 50, but doubling to 200 parts per million, and you only add another uh, 3 watts per square metre. Double again to what it is about now, 400, and you've added another three. So the total greenhouse uh, forcing of, of uh, carbon dioxide is around about uh, 30 watts per square metre, of which most was in the first 50 parts per meter. Per, per meter. So by adding more carbon dioxide, it really has a small impact. But is that an important impact? And I guess that's the, the, the critical thing. So we said, there is a greenhouse effect. Increasing carbon dioxide in the atmosphere will enhance the greenhouse effect, particularly by the how it impacts on the surface energy balance and how much of the temperature rise. There's an important paper put out in 1966 by Bill Priest, the former chief of the CSRA Division of uh, Meteorological Research. And his paper was on the, the uh, limitation of temperatures in hot climates by evaporation. And this really is the, the crux of why we shouldn't be so concerned about greenhouse gas emissions, because 70% of the Earth's surface is ocean, and a large part of the remainder is transpiring vegetation, as long as the temperature is warm, so that we can get evaporation from the ocean. Those three components of the Earth's energy base that we looked at before, the surface emission, the back radiation, and the uh, the latent heat exchange. They all increase with temperature. Uh, by well-known laws, the uh, back radiation and the surface emission by the Stefan Boltzmann law, uh, in the 1870s they were worked out the clouds just for power and relationship uh, is the fundamental reason why the evaporation increases. That goes back to the 1850s. The important thing to note here though is the difference between these. The, the net uh, um, energy loss from the surface doesn't really increase very much at all through these temperatures here because they, both of the, the radiation properties increase according to the fourth power of temperature. Very closely linked, but the uh, evaporation is quite independent. Almost, well, it in fact doubles every 10 degrees uh, temperature rise. But the total loss of energy from the surface is in fact 
the, the net loss here and the, the uh, evaporation, or the evaporation of latent heat. And this is, these are the critical things that are going to control the, the Earth's temperature. And we see here, this is the solar absorption at the surface. This is the total loss without any, uh, uh, greenhouse, any enhanced greenhouse effect. And we see that uh, if for some reason the Earth's surface uh, uh, fell a little bit, the solar radiation is much stronger, and so the Earth will, temperature will rise to the equilibrium or the stable point. If for some reason that the, uh, the Earth's temperature rose, the emissions would increase, we'd be losing energy and we'd fall back. If we add carbon dioxide, and IPCC says that uh, that will in fact increase the back radiation by that uh, 4 watts per square metre, we reduce then the net radiation loss, and so we drop the total energy loss down, and the Earth has got to warm up to a new stable value. And if you look at the scale, it's certainly less than a degree. So essentially because of the evaporation component, the Earth's temperature is very stable, as long as the, the various configurations that we have at the present time. We can also calculate this. The surface energy input, the radiation forcing, is about 3.7 watts per square metre. The increase in the rate of surface energy loss is by these two, two components. For each one degree temperature rise, 5.4 5 watts per square metre for radiation and 6 for latent heat at the Earth's average temperature of 15 degrees. So what we see quite clearly is that we need quite a bit of energy uh, input to the Earth's surface to actually raise the temperature. And because the energy, the energy input is only uh, 3.7 watts per square metre and the loss is 11.4, the, the new equilibrium temperature is only about 0.3 degrees. This is conservation of energy. If you're going to raise the temperature by more than 0.3, you've got to find another energy source. Well, the IPCC does talk about positive feedbacks, and this is true, because the atmospheric temperature increases with surface temperature, and water vapour concentration in the atmosphere increases with temperature for a constant relative humidity. There's an incremental increase in the back radiation because of the water vapour and the increased temperature, and that increases the surface temperature a little bit more. And so each time you go through this, this process and it adds a little bit, it's like it's, a, it's an infinite series. And so we get the total increase of surface temperatures given by this formula here. The DT1, which was the, the direct forcing, and all of these little increments. Now, if one looks at that without any, any mathematical knowledge, one would say, well, look, that's almost like a runaway climate change. But, uh, adding all these little bits, it will go on and on and on infinitely. But we know from mathematics that as long as R is less than 1, we have a, uh, a solution to this. R being the rate of increase of back radiation because of water vapour and temperature, as against the total energy loss of the surface, which we've seen before, was the infrared radiation and the, uh, uh, and the latent energy. And we find that dt is dt1 over 1 minus R. 1 minus R is quite important because that's a denominator. As R becomes larger towards 1, this becomes very small and so the amplification becomes very large. If R is constrained to being a small value, then so also the amplification is, is constrained. What we find is that, uh, again, reiterating, 70% of the Earth's uh, ocean, uh, surface is ocean, and a further large fraction is transpiring vegetation, and so evaporation is a very important component in the energy balance. The feedback uh, ratio R, 4.8 <coughs> over 11.4, uh, 0.4, amplification is 1 over 1 minus R, 1.7. So we multiply the original 0.3 by uh, 1.7, and we get doubling of CO2 will give us about 0.5 of a degree. 